morning, everyone. I was going to say welcome to sunny California as a joke, but I see that the sun is starting to come out, so maybe we'll have a sunny day for the rest of today. For the next 25 to 30 minutes, and thank you for spending time with me, I'm going to talk about a live chat funnel. And I'm specifically going to talk about how this is different than the traditional kind of MQL inbound funnel that we're used to, provide you with some insights and considerations as you go to implement and manage one of these live chat funnels. There we go. So I've been in sales operations for a long, long time. But I've had a chance to work at some really great companies and with some really fantastic people along the way. One of the things that I've got to see is the kind of advent of a whole bunch of things that we just kind of take for standard and granted today. When I first started, CRM through Salesforce.com was just starting to be adopted by companies that were not billions and billions of dollars in revenue. We started doing data-driven marketing, progressive profiling, and that became marketing automation. We then started to focus on optimizing the middle of the funnel and SDR, so sales acceleration came along. And now all of the great things that are being done with machine learning and AI and sales and marketing that are going to have profound impact going forward. <clears throat> when I joined Intercom about five months ago, that was the first exposure I had to live chat funnel. And if I step back a bit and think about what all of these innovations over the years have in common, they're all trying to make sales more personal. And a live chat funnel can make sales more personal. What do I mean by personal? You can walk into any store in the real world, and there's always somebody there that can help you out. If you go in there often, they may even know your name and may even know your preferences. You can walk up to them at any time and ask a question, and they can walk up to you and ask if you need assistance. And that's what I mean by personal. And that's really the experience that you can deliver to your prospects and customers with a live chat funnel. Live chat allows when your prospects to come to your website and they engage with your content and they want to ask a question, they can literally walk up to you and ask a question. So I want to cover two areas today. One is highlighting the differences between also managing a live chat funnel alongside the traditional inbound MQL funnel that we're all used to, and then give you some insights that I've learned over the last four or five months of helping to build and manage this. <clears throat> we spend a ton of money on demand generation. Probably the companies that are just represented here at this conference, it's hundreds of millions of dollars. But we do it for a very, very good reason. We try to build awareness, we educate, but ultimately we want to drive to have high value engagement and a conversation with our prospects. But when our prospects come to our website and they engage with us and they want to have a chat with us, we throw up all of these barriers to having that chat. Yeah, they can fill out a web form. They could click on a link and email you. They can raise their hand and say, hey, call me. But why do we do this? Even if we have the best intentions of following up, HubSpot has data that shows if you wait just five minutes, you have a 10x less likelihood of connecting with that prospect. <clears throat> and we all know that this is true. If you wait 15 minutes and 30 minutes and then an hour or even overnight, the chance of connecting with somebody who just a short time ago wanted to connect with you significantly decreases. A live chat funnel is instant or near instant. When that prospect comes to your site, engages with your content, and raises their hand and said, hey, I want to have a chat, you can have a chat with them. The funnel on the left is the traditional funnel that we're all used to. We execute demand generation programs. We drive visitors to our site. They become prospects. We nurture them through tracks. We score them along the way. And when they meet a certain score threshold, or take a high value action, we declare them an MQL and we decide that we're now gonna to try to connect with you. The live chat funnel works in very much the same way. 
We also execute demand generation programs to drive visitors, turn them into prospects, nurture and score them along the way. But the difference is that anywhere in that funnel, we provide them the ability to raise their hand and have a chat. I want to talk about a little bit of the benefits that you can get from having a live chat funnel. The first I'm going to spend some time on are the difference in conversion rates. The one on the left, again, is the one that we're used to. We all have different definitions of an MQL, of an SQL, of what qualifies to create an opportunity of when we hand it off to an AE. So our metrics may differ a bit. But in the ones that I've been involved in, it's typically 8 to 10% conversion from MQL to SQL. And then I typically see a conversion of about 2% through the whole funnel from MQL to close one customer. On the live chat funnel, you see that first bar that says chat. This is when a prospect initiates a chat with you. We do not chat with everybody that does this. You still do some qualification, and there's still some automation that you can deploy. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. But for the ones that we do move forward, we call those engaged chats. In many ways, the engaged chat bar and the MQL bar are at similar spots in these funnels. But we do see a 10 to 20% increase in the conversion rate from engaged chats to SQLs in the live chat funnel, and about a 20 to 30% increase in the overall conversion rate from the engaged chat to closed one. I know we all know the benefits of increased conversion rates. This is the 17th year in a row that I'm having to negotiate with finance on headcount and staffing and budget, and showing increased conversion rates gets you those heads. But I put a little table in at the bottom just to show you an example. If we have 10,000 leads that are coming through the traditional channel, and now those same 10,000 leads, half of them, go through the live chat funnel, same number of leads, same spend on marketing, we can have an increase of up to 20% on the number of closed one customers. There's a number of things that drive these increased conversions. The first is the obvious one, the more timely follow-up. It's instant. When someone wants to connect with you and have a chat, you can have a chat. So those first response times, initial response times, are as optimized as they can be. The higher connect rates lead to higher conversion rates. There's also a better ability to qualify. You can get more valuable dialogue and insights into the prospect through a two-minute chat than you can ever do through email. Better understanding their needs, their requirements, their concerns, what they're looking to learn allows you to better engage with them following that, which is typically a discovery call. That improves your conversions because the effectiveness of your follow-up is just better. And that has impact all the way down the funnel. <clears throat> the last one wasn't quite as intuitive to me when I started, but we have a thing called SDR certification at Intercom. It's where any employee can spend an hour with our SDRs. You learn the systems, the tools, you witness some live chats, and at the end of it, you can man the controls and have a couple live chats on your own. When I sat there, one came in, the prospect had fit, someone we would be more than happy to sell to. They had need, and they also had behavior. They were interacting with us before. So we engaged in a live chat with this prospect, and within a minute, this person told us that they only wanted to use something if it was free. We don't currently have that offering, so we nicely said thanks for your time, sent them some content showing the value of a live chat solution, gave them our email address so they can contact us directly in the future, and we close that chat. Worst case scenario is in any other flow that I've been involved in implementing and managing, the combination of fit, the combination of need, and the score that the behavior would have driven, this would have become an MQL. An SDR would have reached out, maybe they would have connected, and possibly schedule a half an hour discovery call with them, the account executive, and possibly a solution engineer. We would have wasted over an hour of time and a couple of weeks to learn the same exact thing that we learned in a two-minute chat. So qualifying these out earlier 
has profound benefits downstream, not only on conversion rates, but also on your use of that precious capacity that you have. There's a number of benefits from a live chat funnel. We talked about the higher ROI that you can get from your marketing dollars. You don't need to spend more, but you're gonna connect more with your prospects. So you're gonna get more leverage from that. The improved conversions we talked about, but this is also a very personal way of engaging earlier in the funnel with your prospects than you could before. Starting a relationship off that way, even if they're not sales ready at this point, has profound future benefit. The velocity is obvious with the first response time and the initial response time. What might not be so obvious though is that the whole time to discovery and pipeline also increases. You can at times do real-time discovery, know exactly what you wanna do with them in your overall supply chain. The time in terms of number of days can decrease by a significant amount. And it's also the most customer-centric way and option that you can engage with your prospects. You are giving them the choice to walk up to you and to have a chat when they want to have that chat. There's a number of insights that I've learned in the last few months and considerations that I want to share with you as you're thinking about implementing and then managing a live chat funnel. The first, as I mentioned before, we still do qualification and you still route these leads. You can enrich the lead and the data when it comes in so you can get it to the right segment. You can use data that you may already have in CRM if it's a known visitor. You can also use an operator or some automation to ask additional questions, get some additional insights to further qualify. Once you do that, you then route it in almost an identical manner. You can send it to an SDR, you can send it to an account exec if you have an ABM uh, sort of process going. You can route it to a relationship manager if it's a customer. You can round robin it, you can send it to a team inbox so that people can monitor and follow up with. The one thing that I wanna leave you before I move off of qualification is do it quickly. Don't miss the opportunity to have a chat with a prospect because you're just not getting this piece of data or that piece of data, and by the time you do, they've already left. Optimize to the best you can, but do not lose that opportunity to speak with a prospect. The conversations that you have in live chat are different than email or phone. First off, you have to say hello, and you want it to be a warm, personal hello. Many times they reach out to you, just say hi, be yourself, you're talking to a person, have some personality. Ask them why they're here, answer their initial question, but then try to find out what their interest is in your solution or your offering as quickly as you can. By doing this, you'll have a much better idea of the next set of questions that you may wanna ask or the insights that you may wanna gain in, other, in order to understand where you may wanna take this chat. After you've answered a few of their questions, you've now earned the right to ask them on your own. Make sure they're open-ended. What are your challenges? What are you hoping to achieve? Don't make them yes or no. As you go through those, you're gaining incredibly valuable insights in order to qualify and understand where they are in the buying cycle. This is a great point too if you haven't collected all the information you want in that company to just simply ask how many people work there. It's a easy part of the conversation to capture these initial data or additional data points that you need. You want this chat to be valuable both for you but also for the prospect. It's going to reach its logical end. Don't extend them. When you feel that it's getting to the end and the prospect is, sat prospect is satisfied and you are too, bring it to that conclusion. Make sure you have a next, a next step. Make sure the expectations are properly set of what that is and agreement on those next step if you need that as well and bring it to a friendly close. So again, you are talking to a person on the other side, so talk to them as, the, as if they were standing right next to you. Be conversational, have some personality, be yourself. When you're asking questions, do provide context around why you may be asking these questions. It allows the prospect to answer it better or to understand why, but it also provides you back with more valuable information from that response. 
again, conversational, what's, why's, how's, not yes or no questions. And again, as I mentioned, bring it to the end, know when to stop this conversation and how to end it in a valuable way. When these chats end, you can do many of the same things that you would through any other funnel. You can schedule some follow-up if you have to go offline and get more information. You can schedule a discovery call if that's what you need to do. If they're not sales ready, you can move them to a nurture track as you would with any other lead. But there's two up here that you can really only do with a live chat funnel, and I wanna talk about those uh, specifically. One is it's really easy to loop in a teammate, an account executive, a solution engineer. You have the ability to do discovery in real time. And this is incredibly, incredibly valuable. You have their attention. If you do this, ask for permission to bring somebody else in, set the expectations of what you wanna accomplish and make sure that they have enough time to engage in longer dialogue. If you're an SDR, you can also pass it off to those folks and then you can drop on that channel as well. Real-time discovery is something that you can do with a live chat solution. In addition, if your business model and sales motions allow it, you can possibly close the deal in real time. At Intercom, we have a very high velocity segment that we sell into and we have a self-service infrastructure. We have put together and enabled a team of account executives that get leads to route it to them directly. They qualify and they close. Many of them are closing a deal within a chat dialogue. SDR capacity. When I first started working with this funnel, I was concerned of how we schedule and, and man and staff the SDRs against this. We all have our different ways of building capacity models, the metrics that we use, how we look at productivity. So I don't wanna go into how to build a capacity model with you, but I do wanna share some insights that I learned over the last few months. The first is that SDRs can handle more engaged chats per person than they can MQLs. They don't have to go through the process of connecting, of trying to connect, of scheduling a meeting, of possibly exchanging agendas it's a lot faster to go through these leads. We see about a 10 to 20% increase in the number of leads that they're able to handle. And I think with some optimization, it can go up from there. We talked about the higher conversion rates and where it hits you in the capacity model are the productivity metrics. More leads per SDR is more SQLs, more pipeline, and more closed one opportunities per SDR. That's a great point to make when you're negotiating with finance. We are getting more from the spend that we have per head. We have a great analytics team at Intercom. I asked them to help me understand how many of the leads that come through the live chat funnel would otherwise have gone through the MQL funnel. They did a bunch of analysis. They looked at correlations and behavior. They showed me some formulas that, quite frankly, I don't know that I understand. Um, but they said at least 50% and maybe more of the chats that we have through our live chat funnel would have otherwise been MQLs, which means as you're increasing your lead volume through the live chat funnel and having a staff against it, a lot of the capacity and the spend is just being moved from the funnel that you're managing now and staffing over to your live chat funnel. And lastly, you can control the flow of this. This is especially important between time zones, pre and post normal business working hours, or periods of heavy volume. You can monitor and meter this through your qualification criteria or using automation or on-off features so that you make sure that you're not overloading and not providing that great initial experience that you wanna do with chat. <clears throat> now that you've staffed up your live chat funnel, your SDRs now need to have the skill set to have live chats. Since these conversations are real time and live, a prospect can literally go anywhere. They quite often start with asking about product, features or functions or integrations, competitors or maybe even pricing. And because it's live, you have to respond. You don't have the benefit of an email flow of possibly lightly responding and asking for a meeting. So the SDRs need an additional layer or two of knowledge in those areas, but more importantly, they need to be enabled of how to respond to these questions. They need to do it in a credible way, 
but not in a way that gets us down a rat hole we don't want to go to at this point in the cycle or get into a discussion that isn't necessarily relevant for this engagement at this point. In addition, the SDRs need to know how to manage this conversation like any other conversation, how to start it, what to do in the middle, how to pull information out, how to provide value, and again, most importantly, how to end this conversation. We talk about how to have live chats. You, of course, need scripts. You need practice. You need battle cards. You need all of the things that you would need for any other type of conversation. And in order to make sure the SDRs have these skills, you need to evolve your onboarding, your enablement, and the coaching that you provide them as they manage the live chat funnel. So managers, we've set up our live chat funnel, we've staffed it with SDRs, and we've enabled them to have these chats. There's a few things that you also need to do that are different. You are always looking at dashboards and prioritizing and managing the flow of the leads against the SLAs and the expectations. You still need to do this. I recommend having a different set of dashboards and reports for the live chat funnel. They can be in the same dashboard but have different views of them. They have different flow dynamics. They have different expectations and different SLAs that we want to enforce. Now, you can always ask your friendly sales operations team to help you create all of these, um, but you do need to set these up so you can manage them as a manager. In addition, we talked about the scripts and the content. You do need to work with your partners, PMM and other people in sales, to develop these to build your library, to make sure that you have them in your enablement tools so that they can be used real time and live and constantly referred to so you can have a lot of benefit from that chat. And of course, you need to work with your enablement team to make sure that we're onboarding, enabling, and coaching in the right way as we work this funnel. So, hopefully, in the last 20 or so minutes, you have a good understanding of how a live chat funnel is different than a traditional inbound MQL funnel that most of us are used to. How you need to look at capacity, how conversion rates may be different, how you need to enable the teams to execute this, and how you can set it up. But more so, hopefully you've realized the tremendous amount of value that this can generate for your organization. More leverage and ROI from the marketing spend that you're doing anyways, because you're able to have more connections and more conversations with your prospects. The improved conversions we talked about, which have profound benefit to managing a highly productive uh, sales organization. The personalization too is great. Starting off this way, even if you're not selling to them now, is a wonderful way to build that relationship so when they are ready to buy, they're likely coming right back to you. The velocity also has great benefits, not only with that initial response time, but all the way through the sales cycle and the supply chain and the customer centric nature of this is second to none. At the end of the day, the most personal conversation is one that's face to face. So please come visit us and the other sponsors at the booth. Um, I think we do have time for maybe one or two questions, so I'd be more than happy to take them. And Yes, there's two ways that you can do it. One is many of them reach out to you. So they're asking you for a question. Your response should be, hello, thank you for visiting, um, and try to answer that initial question that they have. If you are the one that's proactively reaching out, yes, it's a warm hello. Hello, thank you for visiting us today. Is there anything that I can do to help? Just leave it pretty basic, quick and benign and safe so that they don't feel like they have to get into something that they don't, or if they don't respond, that's okay too. Just a really warm, friendly hello. Again, just like we're in the real world. People walk up to you and say, thanks for stopping by. If you need any help, I'm here. Those things work in this sort of dialogue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've seen uh, customers have different points of view on that. And at the end of the day, we want to deploy a solution. You should buy one that meets the needs, your branding requirements, how you want to manage your business. But in our case, a lot of the names that do pop up are actual SDRs who you will be having a conversation with. 
we already know that it's routing to them, so it is that person that you see. Yeah, putting up some, some fake person or someone you might not get to, maybe something that you don't want to do, but they are actually all effective. It's just a matter of designing your processes and your methodologies around them, understanding your customers, and then use the right mix of them. Oh, there certainly could be. And that's, again, we have a great analytics team, and we do a lot of testing to try to optimize all of these things. So I would do a lot of test and, and adjust, test and adjust, until you get to that right way that for what you sell to who you sell it to is giving you the optimal sort of results. All righty, uh, we're at the end of our time. Thank you, everyone, again, for joining us today. Thanks. <laughs>